He calls Barack Obama his idol. We are and always will be the United States of America. And not progressives, the enemy. Why do you hate Mexico? Those are filthy, stinking animals. Really? To his patients, he's new hope. To his critics, he's an enabler. Because they have such a low esteem, doesn't matter how much surgery they will get, they will never be happy. Today on the journal, we will ask the question, who is Dr. Omalapu? In 1969, Mary Hernandez moved to Manhattan from Panama in search of a new beginning. It wouldn't be long till she met her husband, a young, ambitious man from Kenya. Two years later, they were married. Soon after, Mary gave birth to a healthy baby boy whom she would call Osa. Growing up in New York uh, City was a, was a wonderful place to grow up. It's a very multicultural uh, city, had a, it was built a lot. I remember my dad teaching me how to ride a bike. Um, and there's a park that's only about a block from our house in Manhattan called Riverside Park, where uh, he taught me how to ride a bike. And you know how the parent holds the seat behind you, and you know, like, don't let go, don't let go. And, you know, I, well, I finally discovered that he had been letting go for, for minutes and minutes, and I look behind me, and he's like 100 yards away, way, way back there, and I freak out. I lose control of the bike, I fell, and I get a big gaping hole in my knee. I mean, I was six years old, it seemed like my leg was about to be amputated, but in actuality, it was a pretty small hole. But uh, I just remember my dad scooping me up in one hand, grabbing the bike in the other hand, and running to the local uh, bodega, the little corner store, to get some iodine and band-aids and stuff for me. I just remember feeling really small in my dad's hands. Early on, a young Osak would show signs of defiance and stubbornness that would later be instrumental to his success. Uh, I wanted to go to a uh, high school in uh, New York called Performing Arts. Uh, I was actually pretty bad at it. I spent a whole year in eighth grade making my portfolio uh, to get into Performing Arts. And I got in and I was super excited. And then kind of as an aside, I took this, this what I thought was a quiz to get into uh, the science high school. And I got in there as well, but I had no intentions, obviously, of going there. Um, but once I, you know, she kind of made the choice for me. And I was, I didn't think, I, I didn't speak to her for like a couple months because I was pissed that she made me go to the science school instead of the art school. After graduating atop his class in 1990, Osak went on to attend Columbia University, where he would meet close friend and colleague, Eddie Vargas. I met Osak when I moved to my last house. He welcomed us with some cold beverages and wished us the best, and he was very excited knowing that he has a nice family living next to him. After only his second year of college, Osak would make a decision that would change his life forever. I decided midway through college that, uh, that I was gonna be a biology major. Uh, and that was the first class that really interested me. Biology somehow seemed pretty cool. I mean, looking under, I think looking under a microscope for the first time really made me realize how crazy life is. Osa came to me and told me that he wanted to become a doctor. I told him, go for it, man. Med school was a lot of fun, you know? It was uh, a lot of work, obviously, a lot of studying. Um, you know, I think the closest analogy is something like boot camp, but who came for your mind, not really for your, for your body. Today, Dr. Omalapu calls the sunny beaches of Fort Lauderdale home, where he is part of an elite team of surgeons in the most popular cosmetic center in South Florida. 